Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Pain. Woo! I'm T Pain. And welcome to Let's Learn C. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections or examples. Make sure to have annotations turned on so you can see what updates I make to these videos. I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can follow along with whichever program or IDE you'd like. Today's focus will be on if, else, and switches, which are basic flow controls for your program. And this lesson builds heavily on previous lessons, so feel free to check out those if you're unfamiliar with a topic. If this is your first programming language, I'd strongly recommend you check out the Let's Learn Python series, which teaches you the fundamentals of programming. All you need are the basics and object-oriented programming series Link to the right and you'll be well prepared for this C++ series. All right, so what is an if statement? I'll give you an example. If I startle my cat, he'll pee on my couch. If I punch myself in the eyeball, I'll gain heat vision. If I hold out my hand and really concentrate on a cup, it'll levitate into my grasp. If I jump off a cliff, then I'm going to have a great flight. These are if statements and they are all lies, except about the cat one. My couch really does smell like pee. Not enough Febreze in the world to cover that one up. All right, so if statements work just like they did in Python, but parentheses must enclose the condition that you're checking for. Condition values that are non-zero are true, even if they are negative. We can use relational operators to compare different values just like we did with Python and as we went through earlier in our logic operators discussion. You can also use logic operators of and and or. So let's look at some examples. So here I have my default code up top um, that we've been pasting over and over again, which is just the include IO string, the include string using namespace standard, our main function, our return at the end, and then a uh, simple string Z and get line for Z to uh, stop our program before closing out. Okay, so now I'm gonna paste in a whole bunch of if statements. So let's go ahead and run our program to see exactly what it's spitting out and we'll go through the code line by line. So the results are, ham sandwich with lettuce, tomato, on wheat, with orange juice. All right, so what's going on here? We have an if statement here, and we pass in one, and then we have a C out uh, that just C outs ham, okay? After that, we have a negative one, which will be true, because again, all non-zero values passed in the parentheses are going to evaluate as true. So we're gonna print out ham sandwich. We have a character A here, which will be true, and it's gonna say width. So right here, we are evaluating uh, this is true because five is greater than four. We have another condition, five is greater than four, and it's just checking for tomatoes. And I actually meant this to be uh, greater than or equal to, but uh, whatever. Then we have the condition to check for is three not equal to three, which is false. So we have no pickles on our sandwich because I hate pickles on my sandwich. Uh, then we have a condition to check if these two values are uh, exactly the same, which they are, so it says on wheat. Um, and then we have our and operator and or operators here. And you can stack these multiples next to each other if you wanted to, to check. Uh, uh, they'll stack up nicely and evaluate all the same. So something to note is that I did change up the spacing um, on these guys, and you can actually include the statement that is gonna be activated by the if statement condition to be right next to it or to be down in the line below it and it'll evaluate just the same. However, what if you want to string together multiple statements? Like what if I wanted to have multiple lettuces out, be output? How would I do that? In Python, we used a colon after the condition and everything within the if statements needed to be indented, just like this right here. Everything needed to be indented inward. In C++, however, we use curly braces after the condition to contain a block of code or a bunch of operations or statements that you'd like to make. So we're gonna go ahead and add curly braces to this if statement right here and add it at the end to fully enclose all the things that we want to have happen. C++ in the background is actually adding these in um, in statements where they're just a single line. That's important to know because when you actually create variables within this block of code, they're going to be destroyed unless they're global or something and you won't be able to access them outside of that block. And this scope problem is just like what we learned in Python. Another thing to note is indentation within the curly braces did not matter. However, it's highly recommended that you indent everything for clarity. So if I wanted to, I could unindent these right here, but it becomes harder to read the code. So we'd like to have it like that. 
Lastly, in Python, we had the ability to have an empty body of a statement by using the keyword pass. And pass in Python would basically say do nothing. In C++, if we wanted to do this, all we'd need to do is delete out all our code and just add a simple semicolon to say the equivalent of pass. And that's it. All right, great. So we've got some if statements. We've learned about adding curly braces around if statements. Now, what about else statements? Are those still true? Absolutely. Else statements still work exactly as they did in Python. So we're going to go ahead and select all this code and just paste in some more code here. So here we have a simple uh, if condition and it says if four is greater than five, which is never true, then say this and it says you'll never see this text right here. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this program from running so we can actually see the code properly. And then it says else pork belly is yummy, which is great and true. So that's all there really is to an else statement. You can add curly braces as well after an else keyword to enclose a block of code if you want to add multiple lines. Cool beans. Now what about elif? In Python, we had the keyword elif if we wanted to do an else if statement or check for an additional uh, condition. Does that also work in C++? Not quite. We don't have the keyword elif, but instead we can combine the two keywords right next to each other to say else if, and it works just the same. It gives us an additional condition to check for and then has an additional statement block that we can add in. So we've learned about if, else if, and else. Is there anything else we should know about uh, weird conditionals or something? Absolutely, there is another thing. There is the conditional operator. And the conditional operator is a new and unique operator we haven't seen before. It is represented by a question mark and colon. It takes three operands or evaluates three expressions. Let's go ahead and clear out this code and paste in an example right here. Okay, the conditional operator is represented by a question mark and semicolon right here. And you have three sets of expressions, one to the left, one in the middle between the two, and one at afterwards, okay? just as we see down below here. So the first we have here is the expression to be evaluated. Typically the result that we're looking for from this expression is a Boolean value. So here we have a, a greater than side to check, to see if five is greater than four, a very simple condition. And then we have the question mark operator and the operator says to begin this analysis and the colon at the, uh, in the middle here actually says to choose between the left or the right based on the value of true or false in the first condition. So if this evaluates true, then we're going to see out A. If it evaluates as false, then we're going to see out as B. And so let's go ahead and run it and see what it does. Is five greater than four? The answer is A. Yes, it absolutely is. Cool. So this is a very slick conditional method, but uh, it can be very confusing for beginners. So I implore you to try the examples to really hammer in this new way of thinking. Okay, sure, we can do a C out expression, but what other ways can we use this conditional operator? Well, there's actually a very slick method of assigning variables this way. And I'm gonna paste in another example here. And here we have an int x being assigned to the value of, and then here's the expression. Here is the conditional operator. Is five greater than four? If it is, then we're gonna assign it to the value of one. Otherwise, we're gonna assign it to the value of two. So x will be outputted as one. Let's go ahead and save that and test it out just to be sure. And here we go. Since we didn't include a new line in the previous line, then uh, it's gonna stack it right next to the other one. So our results are one. The value of x has now been assigned the value of one. Because again, this condition said it was true. So it was of these two results, we're going to set it to the value of one because it's true, not two because it's false. Yeah, I think you guys are getting the hang of this now. All right, is there anything else we should know about weird conditionals in C++? Of course there is. <laughs> in Python, if you wanted to have a long list of conditions you wanted to check for, you would end up making lots of if and else of statements. C++ has a simple but limited alternative to that, and that is switches a switch checks for some value and compares it to a bunch of other values. Values that switches can check for can only be non-floating point numbers, aka all versions of integers. 
and it can also check for characters. That's it though. It cannot check against strings, classes, or doubles. All right, so let's create a very simple form of a switch statement. Here we go, I'm gonna paste this in. All right, so we have a very simple switch statement here. We're gonna go ahead and save it and run it. And here it is, it just says at one. So we have a switch keyword right here, and then we have the variable we're passing in. So this is gonna be pretty much our first introduction into functions, basically, uh, because it acts pretty much the same way. Uh, you have your function, you have your arguments, and then you have your block of code following it. So this argument is basically going to be its, its case that it's gonna be checking against. So case one says, hey, is the variable equal to this va value right here? If it is, then evaluate this following statement. All right, that's cool. So we got our first working switch statement. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paste some more code in here and you're gonna notice something weird happen. So we've added in two more cases here. Now watch what happens when I actually run this. So what we would expect to happen is since we're passing in one and it only matches up with this first case, then it would just output at one. But the results are that it actually outputs one, two, and three. Why is this happening? Well, this is happening because we are not including a keyword that we've already used in Python. That keyword is break. In Python, when we wanted to stop a loop from continuing, we would add the keyword break to kill the loop altogether. In C++, for switches in particular, you must add a break in between cases or at the end of a case if you want it to stop evaluating code. Otherwise, it will continue to evaluate every case following that. So it's very weird. So if we wanted this to stop after case two, we would just add a break right here, save it, stop our code and restart it. And now it won't output the at three anymore. It'll stop, it'll stop the switch and then we'll continue on through the rest of our code. Something else worth noting is that you can actually move multiple conditions around. So then you can check for one and two and if either one of these are met, then we're gonna output or both of these lines of code because of what we just learned. So again, if any case is met, then it will evaluate everything below it until a break is hit. And so if we ran this code, it would output one and two again. And here it is, cool. Just like if statements, you cannot initialize variables within a case. Otherwise, it's deleted when the switch statement finishes, unless of course it's a global variable, but we'll get to that at a later point. For now, just know that the general rule is that variables created within a switch or within an if statement or within an else statement will be deleted. You can initialize them somewhere else in the program and then assign their value within an if switch or else statement and the variable will not be deleted. It's only when it's created within these that you're going to have problems. Lastly, instead of case, you can use the keyword default to do something if no other case is met. Think of default just like an else statement. Final note about switch statements is I personally rarely ever use them because they have such a restrictive structure, but it's still a great tool for your programming toolbox. Thanks so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final coding challenges here and also the debug challenges linked below in the description. You are a brilliant programmer and I'm sure you can do it if you set your mind to it. I will be posting solutions for all of these problems after a few more tutorials, but I really want you to develop your own solutions and skills. There's often many correct answers. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all and check out the comments if you're having any problems. Lastly, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Hit that like button to show some love or support me on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive.